Yang 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 Oh my god. Hi everyone, it's Kendall here. Um, and I'm back with another story time video because you guys really like these. These have very quickly become one of my most requested videos ever. And while I still have stories, I'll still be giving them to you. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my first time at MB2, at In Hongbe, all of that. Because I realized I never told you guys the story one. And two, it kind of sets the precedent for the rest of the stories that involve MB2. <laughs> like, if it started off this bad, why am I surprised that it didn't really get better? So, this was back when I was at Solgong, actually. So, this was in 2015, the first time I went to Korea. Um, and some people at Solgong were like, hey, Kendall, do you want to go clubbing? And I'm like, nah, fam, actually. Needless to say, they eventually convinced me to go. And we go, and... It's chill. Like, it's pretty chill. I'm actually liking it. Um, I'm doing my little dance, doing my little flirt. <laughs> Before the night is over, um, I'm left with three girls and two guys. Um, for the sake of this story, I'm gonna change all of their names, but um, uh, let's say Tony, Paige, and Wallet. Tony came with a Tinder date. So that's her guy, so I'll just call him Tinder. Wallet, and Wallet met a guy there. If you're wondering why I call her Wallet, you'll see as the story progresses. Now Wallet, this is the first time I've ever seen Wallet. Never met her, um, don't know, I don't know nothing about her. Um, she was very, very drunk when we met, and I was very, very not. As you may have been able to tell in general, I'm a pretty chill person, so when people are like, oh my god, I, I get very like, overwhelmed very quickly so I meet her and she's oh my god nice enough girl um but she meets a guy and what slowly happens throughout the night is that she's making out with this Korean dude who was very attractive like very tall nice looking very standard Gangnam ass guy um who wanted to get down and dirty in the day for today. Which is fine, she's an adult, she can make out with whoever she wants, I don't give a that had nothing to do with me. But the problem is, eventually it did have something to do with me, because he didn't speak English, she didn't speak Korean, so I ended up being their translator as they flirted with each other. She was like, hardcore, like, oh my god, tell him he's hot. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell him he's hot. Come on, tell him he's hot. And then I like turn to him and I'm like, she said you're hot. He's like, oh, thank you. Tell her I said she's pretty. I'm like, he said you're pretty. I'm not doing this. Eventually what happens is uh, Wallet comes up to me and she's like, Kendall, let's go get food. I'm like, all right, like I've never turned out a meal. She ain't missing no meals, come through. Eventually what happens is that we end up all as a congregation going to get food after the club. So, weirdly enough, this club story isn't where things are terrible. <laughs> things are terrible when we end up at a pota matza in, um, like, like down the street from MB2, where people get too drunk. And I'm gonna need you guys to follow me because this story gets very, very confusing. Yet again, at this point, we have Tony, Paige, Wallet, and Tony's Tinder date, and Wallet's boy toy that she met for the night, right? So, we're chilling or whatever. And at some point, Tony's Tinder date leaves. I don't remember at what particular time, but he's gone. So now we have a very, very drunk Tony, kinda drunk Paige, a to the freaking wind wallet. Tony says she has to pee, like she's not feeling very well. So we were like, oh, okay. Well, we'll come in there with you in a second. Just go to the bathroom. Because I couldn't leave because I was making sure Wallet Girl didn't get kidnapped by this random man that she doesn't know and doesn't understand. Throughout the night, what had happened is she was turning to me and she was like, Kendall. Yes, drunk bitch. He's so hot. That's nice, dude. That's nice. Should I go home with him? And I was like, no, no, you shouldn't. No. You are a very drunk woman right now in a foreign country. You don't understand him nor how to read Korean enough to get your ass back home. And then she turns to me and she's like, oh, but I already told him, sex opsa, sex opsa. I was like, what? For those of you who don't understand why that doesn't make sense, 
technically, literally, in Korean that means I don't have sex. So what she was trying to get at at me was that she was a virgin. Which yet again I didn't ask. I didn't I didn't want to know that. I don't need to know about your sexual history or lack thereof. I didn't ask. I'm just meeting you tonight. <laughs> like I didn't ask. But the problem with how she translated that is that sex upso to me sounds like you don't have a sex. As in there's nothing there. You're just flat in the front like Barbie. You're not going home with him tonight because I can't have your rape and murder on my conscience so this ain't even about you because to be honest I don't like you <laughs> right now I've very definitively decided I don't like you um this is about me long story short she's still flirting with him having me translate her flirting and he's having me translate their flirting and I want to die but we eventually noticed that Tony hasn't come out of the bathroom yet I'm watching over drunk annoying girl while Paige goes to check on her in the bathroom only to come back to me and say, hey, Tony locked the door and she's not answering. And I'm starting to freak out. I'm like, is she okay? Like, I don't know. <laughs> because I asked them for a key and they don't know where it is slash they don't have one. Waiters and waitresses are trying to pry the door open so that they can get Tony out of the bathroom. And my friend Paige goes around the building and hops a fence to look into the window on the outside of it. And she's like, oh crap. She comes back over, hops over the fence, come back to me. Kendall, so what? Uh, she's passed out, cradling the toilet. She may have thrown up. She's covered in toilet paper and she took her bra and her shoes off. I wanna go home. Later we find out after Tony gets her stuff together that uh, it was because quote unquote, I was hot. So I took off my clothes off. Somewhere around this time when we've realized that Tony has passed out, I have Wallet Girl over here who realizes she lost her wallet, right? Hence her name, Wallet. She turns to me and she's like, oh my god, where's my wallet? My wallet! I was like, oh, whoa, what happened? Like, did you lose your wallet? Is everything okay? And she's like, I lost my wallet. I think I lost it at the club. I'm like, Ugh. uh, well, did you have your passport in it? Do you have, like identifying things no social security card or anything right is everything cool and she's like no there's not really anything in it other than like some cash and I was like oh was it all the cash you had no but like where's my wallet I was like was you have the key to your house your credit cards everything except say 20 30 bucks in cash and you're flipping out right now and I'm trying to make sure that Tony's not dead in the bathroom yeah, I'm gonna need you to shut up. <laughs> now, you're probably wondering, like, Kendall, why are you so angry at this girl? I think the part of the thing that was really frustrating for me is that she was, like, in the midst of still flirting and having me translate with this guy. She's rubbing on him, she's laying on him. Oh my god, he's so cute. But where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? Like, my wallet. And I was like, girl, eventually, the guy that Wallet came with, I guess, gets a little impatient because I won't let him take her and dispose of her body. What happens is he stands up and he looks at me and he's like, is it okay if we go? And I'm like, no, what? I'm like, no, it's not okay if you go. Like, she's very, very drunk right now and you're not. So that's kind of creepy. And he was like, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'm like, we're just gonna hang out. I'm like, hang out and do what? Hang out and do what? Hang out and do what? What happened is we were standing in the restaurant literally doing tug of war over this annoying hoe. And I actually wanted to let her go because she got on my nerves. But I was like, nah, conscience. We ended up doing it for a solid like minute and a half just back and forth like ha ha ha. And I'm starting to get mad so I'm at level two. And I'm like, ha ha ha, no, no, she's not going with you. Before I go off on you, I would let her go. And I was like, did you just pump my me? Did you just pump my me, bro? It's funny, because like I'm really crappy with upkeeping from the mar because all of my Korean friends are friends or younger than me. So I'm not really used to speaking in Tondemai very often. But I'm very aware of it when someone uses Panmai to me. Like super aware of it. <laughs> I was about to talk about his Panmai, but I decided to go off on him in a different way and I was like, 
오빠 무슨 얘기를 할수 있어요? 영어를 모르면서. At that, he kind of gave up. Thank God. And he took her number and he left on his way. So the staff is now prying the door open to the bathroom with a screwdriver. And I'm just, somewhere around this time, I just get so overwhelmed with this night that I just sit down and just stare off into the distance. I didn't want to come out. I'm just here though. And I'm like, I should have left my ass home. I should have stayed my ass home. The manager of the restaurant comes over to me and he's like, hey, um, the girl that locked herself in the bathroom, is that your friend? Yeah, it's my friend. He's like, why isn't she coming out? And I had a butthole moment and I was like, cause the door closed. <laughs> and then I had to explain myself a little more. I'm like, well, what I mean is that it's locked and she don't have a key, so. Y'all don't have a key to a lockable door. And we eventually get the door open. Tony's not looking great, so just to be on the safe side, we were like, we're gonna call the hospital. Um, she ended up being fine. But even as the ambulance was coming, this is where I kind of lost it. Like, I actually, she didn't realize it. She don't know to this day that she was about to get hurt. Um, <laughs> because as the ambulance is pulling in, Wallet Girl's like, I'm sorry. I don't want to make this about me. But where's my wallet? Long story short, I sent the ball away. I was like, get out of my face. I'll look for your stupid wallet. Just get out of my face. She, uh, Tony was fine, but we, we, yet again, just double checking to make sure nothing was wrong. Um, we could, probably could have gave her a Picardi sweat and she could have like, slept it off, but yet again, just to be sure. Um, I looked for her wallet. I went back to MV2 and I looked at the like baggage handling people and I was like, hey, do you got a wallet with a white girl in it? They were like, nah. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, good night then. <laughs> And then, oh, I almost forgot, on the walk home, it was monsoon season, by the way, on the walk home, it started to shower. At this point, it's 6 a.m., I'm walking through Hongdae without an umbrella, in my J's, <laughs> and I got completely soaked, and I was like, of course, this is a very, like, cathartic end to this night. I got home smelling like cigarettes and shame and ignorance and not happiness, and I went to sleep. And that was the first time I ever went clubbing in Korea. Um, yeah, that's the story for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.